Fourthly, sanctification, this process, is working when our minds are renewed. Sanctification is working. This process of getting changed and being molded into the image of God is working when our minds are being renewed. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And then he says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then... And only then will you be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So if this process of sanctification is happening, our minds need to be renewed. See, what, just because I'm saved doesn't mean I don't have thoughts of anxiety. Just because I'm saved doesn't mean I don't worry. Just because I'm saved doesn't mean I don't have anger in me. Just because I'm saved doesn't mean stresses don't happen. And this is where most of our temptation when we talked about sin takes place. We think, oh, I should give up eating that cake, even though we, I, know, I know it's not good for me. Or we get angry at people who disagree with us. Or it's okay to live without truth, because I, I, my own truth, because I think what, that's right. That's what it is. Or for us men, I think it's okay to look at a woman dressed a certain way, and that's okay. See, where do our, most of our desires come from in this process? James 1, 13 and 14 says, When tempted, no one should say, God has tempted me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But he says this, But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. Then the desire has conceived and gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. The desires come from the thoughts that we carry. So just because I am saved doesn't mean I don't have these thoughts in my mind. Paul would say in Romans 5, or 8, 5, and 6, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set your mind on the flesh is death, but to set your mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Or 1 Peter 5, 8 warns us, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So this process of sanctification and growing into the image of God really happens in our minds, when we're renewing our minds, when we're engaged with our minds, when we're learning from the master teacher, when we're growing in the grace of God, when we're moving away from these things that entangle us and entice us. Those areas of anxiety and worry and stress. Well, maybe we're not paying attention. It sneaks up on us and then we're surprised that we did something wrong. And quite frankly put, we should never stop renewing our minds. 